This is only an excerpt from the entire Figu Bulletin. Figu Bulletin number 56, May 2006. The world requires wise advisors, in today's world, in which the earlier anchored certainties, virtues, love, peace, freedom and harmony as well as evolutionary knowledge and wisdom break away, in which all good values disintegrate more and more, in which more and more walls are stirred up and led through the state powers who are criminals against humanity, in which criminality and overpopulation know no more bounds, in which nature and the climate are destroyed through the fault of humans, as well as that they themselves are misled through religions and sects, most urgently required, as never before is the compliance with wise advice and guidelines which humanity follows, and by which he can find the way back to the fixed certainties and all the higher values. The advice and guidelines must point to the future and be such that they would be found, from out of the already long existing political, religious and sectarian confusion, in the truth and reality of the creational laws. To this end, no imaginary gods, no saints, representatives of gods, sect gurus and no preachers, and so forth, are required. Rather sages who establish the true and effective creationally conditioned guidelines of life through their practical knowledge and life experience, as well as through their knowledge, and may lead humanity in a world of peace, freedom and love as well as harmony. Sages who can also teach the powerful of the governments, so that these can lead their countries in the correct manner and bring them to prosperity instead of driving them into immeasurable debt, robbing and overburdening the citizens with taxes. And sages are needed who understand how to teach the people according to the creational laws and bring the people onto the path of the true human being so they do not acclaim the criminal state powers who entangle their countries and populations in war conflicts with other countries. Religions and sects are kept free of tax by countries, whereby the main religions even assert a claim over countries in order to withdraw money from the pockets of the citizens, not only their believers. Rather also all persons in their jurisdiction who belong to no religion, by means of horrendous taxes. And all that so the preachers and other religious leaders can have horrendous salaries, and build, tend and maintain, temples of God, while many of the little believing lambs go hungry, live in wretchedness, or not seldom also die in great need. The society of today, as never before, sees facing itself in any relationship, such glaring contradictions that these can no longer be described in their individual forms. Old and young fight each other, just as also do the West, East, North and South, poor and rich, single people and families, and murderous terrorism rules, and indeed on account of countries, just as it is also through religious, sectarian and ideological murder fanatics. Up to the year 1990 it could not have been suspected how the entire thing has formed up into the present time, because, first at this time, deep trenches were torn open that cross through everything worldwide and bring need and destruction as well as corruption. In the name of a false solidarity, countries shovel up monstrous mountains of debt that is not only imposed upon the presently living citizens. Rather it is already pre-programmed for those as yet unborn generations until far into the future. With a complete lack of responsibility, the authoritative criminal governments drive the debts into immeasurable heights, often with the electoral assent won from the citizens suggestively duped by the governments and other politicians, whereby the minority of reasonable people who speak out and defend themselves against it would simply be outvoted and screamed down by the criminals. This is blatant cynicism in its most consummated form. The term solidarity thereby only elicits derisive laughter, because this term only applies to those who hold power in their filthy hands and for those who walk conformably with those filthy-handed ones. Were today's state of humanity observed in general, then it would be horrifyingly determined that, in spite of all the welfare, the high standards of living and the conjured up solidarity, a valuable and arresting moral power emanates neither from the religions or sects, nor from the country, nor legal corporations, nor out of the majority of humans. Seen collectively, that entirety is the revenge of the displaced truth in respect to the compliance with the creational laws. 
The vengeance is in the form of the grasping for power, for war, murder, homicide, for robbery, rape, the destruction of families, terrorism, prostitution, overpopulation, the destruction of the environment, destruction of the climate, the will to rule and tyranny, slander, lies and deceit as well as destruction, and so on and so forth. Truly, there are more and more tendencies towards retreating into intoxications of every kind, into addictions and consumption, as however also in the private spheres and in personal relationship groups. But a blatant retreat results also with regard to public life and with regard to the maintenance of healthy and valuable interpersonal relationships. The majority of humans is only still intent on withdrawal into the self-made cocoon, therein, closed off from the, the outside world and environment, to increasingly atrophy. So it comes to be that the older the human is, the less value he places in creating and maintaining true friendships, because to him, mutual support, love and affection mean less and less, and often nothing more at all. All important and exceedingly important factors are forgotten, whereby the entire concentration is directed only towards absurdities. Actually, the majority of humans has fallen into a state in which disputes participated in with neighbors as well as discussions, are just as rarely or no longer to be found, as neither are quarrels with global events, because these necessities have already been mostly lost. An ancient proverb states, everyone is the smith of his own success slash luck slash happiness. Everyone is the architect of his own fortune, slash, you make your luck. Yet this truth has apparently already long been lost by the majority of terrestrial humanity, therefore hardly any human still knows how, with what, and for what he forges his life. Today hardly anyone still grasps the true value and sense of life, because the consciousness related as well as the true worldly values have already long disappeared and been forgotten from the vocabulary of the majority of humans. The human depletes himself ceaselessly because he has lost control of himself as well as of real life as well as the sense of compliance with the creational natural laws which guarantee everybody a life in love, dignity, peace, freedom, and harmony, if they only followed them. Yet all these values are continuously forgotten, so wise teachers are required to teach them again in order to again allow the individual human and the whole of terrestrial humanity to find the true path and the true values of life. As a matter of fact, an imaginary god, gods, saints, sect gurus, enlightened ones, popes, priests, ministers, or, exalted ones, and, messiahs, and so forth, are not needed, rather solely and alone humans with understanding and reason and sufficient experience in life, experienced sages, wise advisors, who can lead the earth human and teach and show him the path to a good future and true life. Billy Edward Albert Meyer Semiaza Silver Star Center, January 9, 2006, 10.54 p.m. Readers questions question from the reader lately I have been told different things, on one hand something about the Philadelphia experiment and about abductions by extraterrestrials trials and contacts with them. Also, as it was explained much lie and deceit are behind it. On the other hand, also photos have been shown to me, on which crystal skulls, which should have come from extraterrestrial trials, could be seen. Unfortunately, I have never cared about such things and therefore I have no experience with them. Consequently I cannot decide what should I think of all this. Kindly, a friend of mine, told me about your website address, which he had so that I could search in there, whereas I've found it quite astonishing that it was unknown to me until now. Since I think now, that you, Billy Meyer, can certainly tell me, what is this which I have asked all about, so I turn to you with the request, to be able to give me information regarding my questions in one of your bulletins that I have also found in the internet, for which I already thank you now. You Ehrman, Germany. Answer Unfortunately, out of forgetfulness, I can give you an answer to your questions only in the June's Bulletin in 2006, which you will please excuse, because certainly you have already been waiting for it earlier. Unfortunately I always have much about the ears, 
which is why it sometimes can happen that something is missing by me and only appears again lately. Now, as an answer, I will explain to you with the necessary excerpts from the official 400th contact report of 25th September 2005, which should satisfactorily explain your questions. Billy says I have also ascertained it while you were away and I looked through the questions. But look here, there I have some notes, I am always asked again and again namely about what the crystal heads found in South America are all about as well as with the alleged Philadelphia experiment. Of course I have explained many times and again that the crystal heads have nothing to do with extraterrestrial trials and therefore also are not attributed to such however these crystal heads were manufactured in the 19th century in Germany. Nevertheless this will not be accepted as truth just like the fact also that the Philadelphia experiment only corresponds to a fantastic hoax because namely such an experiment has never taken place. Now here, this man here, a Mr. Ehrman, from Germany, would like me again to ask to you and then publish the answer in a bulletin. Can you please give an answer to the questions in brief form? Patar says officially we have never talked about it but several times only in a private manner. Therefore, I would like to will give an answer, which should be in an official form, with which however, I want to restrict myself to the essential the crystal skulls named by you which were found in South America and will be attributed to the Mayas and supposedly should have originated from extraterrestrial trials, as you just said, were fabricated in Germany in the 19th century. In fact in the gem and diamond polishing cities of those places, that were unified in 1933 in the city of Idar Oberstein. The client was a prosperous man by the name of Florian Rosenfelder, from Germany, who operated privately and was a hobbyist archaeologist and who brought the crystal heads also to the Maya region, then to discover it in order to cause a sensation. Although he was able only to place the crystal heads at different places where he thought they would be discovered, before witnesses however, he did not succeed with that because he died of a poisoning, that he suffered through the natives, who then robbed him. And to say something regarding the so-called Philadelphia experiment, about which firstly an author by the name of Berlitz wrote a fantasy book there was never such an experiment, neither in the USA or anywhere else on the earth. The whole fantastic history is based on the fraudulent claims of a man by the name of Cale Allen, in relation to an alleged experiment with a ship, which was named the USS Eldridge. The man thought that his image would rise with this lying story and that he also could become rich through it. When he didn't succeed with this story and the situation became too precarious for him to be exposed as a liar, he vanished without a trace. Billy says the story is known by me, however I didn't know how the ship was named. It is claimed that the US Navy did an experiment with huge electromagnetic vibrations in the harbor of Philadelphia in October 1943 etc with which the named ship then vanished without a trace and reappeared again in the harbor of Norfolk 500 kilometers away in order to vanish also again there after a short time and to become visible again in the harbor of Philadelphia. Patar says yes, that is, in brief the lying story. The end.